did you intend to kill the people who were smashing the shop so? Oh, come on. When suspects are arrested, um, they're all interviewed under caution by, by, by police officers. I had no part in this crime. I'm not guilty for it. I've got no acknowledgement of it. That's all I'd like to say. All of the defendants in this case either chose to make no comment to those questions or denied any involvement in, in the offence. That's the butt of your truck. Yeah. That is a bullet. That's a 9mm casing from a bullet. Can you tell me what that's doing in the back of the truck that you move in and out of there? I haven't got a clue. After a dispute between two organised crime groups in the Durham area escalated to attempted murder, the police knew they had to try to find out who was responsible to bring stability back to the area. This week, seven key members of an organised crime group have been jailed for their involvement in multiple shootings, ram raidings and also attacks with other weapons. During the police interviews, all of them refused to say anything about what had happened and refused to acknowledge any involvement, but they later pled guilty to all of the offences and have been jailed for a total of 100 years. The police launched a complex and intense investigation that uncovered a lot of digital evidence and forensic evidence and it left them with no option but to plead guilty. The operation the police called it was coastal and it saw a 100 officers being involved in the gathering of 400 hours of CCTV and also analysing communication data between phones. They executed a series of dawn raids last year and as a result, seven men were arrested and following the sentences that were handed out at Durham Crown Court, James Stevenson was jailed for 16 years, Wayne Griffin was jailed for 9 years and 9 months, Connor Ellison was jailed for 13 years, Jonathan Miller for 16 years and 9 months and Shane Lee for 9 years, Graham Oliver for 5 years and 4 months and Paul Frain for 14 years. The feud started on January the 7th when a Mitsubishi Shogun was rammed into the front of a house in the Hartlepool area. Four children were asleep inside the home alongside their mother and thankfully nobody was injured. The gang then smashed up a car that was parked in the drive before setting fire to it and then escaping in the same car they came in. The feud then escalated and the following night police were called to reports of an aggravated burglary in South Crescent in the Horden area. While police officers were making initial inquiries at the house, Graham Oliver contacted James Stevenson, who was the leader of the group, and he told him what had happened, and Stevenson then gathered other members and armed themselves and waited at an address on 7th Street, expecting an attack on one of their businesses. Shortly after, two shops were ram raided with a stolen transit van. It was at this point that Stevenson, who owned the tanning store and vape shop, was captured on CCTV along with his gang, putting up in a different Mitsubishi Shogun on 7th Street, arming themselves and then driving there to stop them from damaging the property. They also fired several shots from a 9mm firearm and the police would be able to confirm from the angle that the buddy had travelled from the car. There was a short pursuit following this and the van chased the Mitsubishi but then the vehicle was found burnt out a week after and the police inquiries began. They also had DNA evidence in relation to blood that was found on a bottle that was used in an arson attack. And eventually a stolen Ford Transit entered 5th Street and began to ram the, the business premises. Fortunately, there was nobody within it at the time, um, but it caused extensive damage. James Stevenson and the other defendants, they're now aware that there's an attack taking place on Fifth Street, so they get into the Mitsubishi Shogun and travel down Aden Street to the junction with Fifth Street. And as they look down, the Ford Transit is still ramming the business premises on Fifth Street. The occupants of the Mitsubishi Shogun then discharge what we now know to be a 9mm handgun towards the vehicle. The Mitsubishi Shogun then makes off towards Easington and is followed in what we would see as a pursuit by the Ford Transit van. And the last sighting that we have of that on the CCTV is in the Haswell area. And interestingly, 
the Mitsubishi Shoguns later found a week later actually burnt out in the Coxo area. So following the reports by members of the public, as you can imagine, there's lots of information that comes into the police pretty quickly and we've got to establish exactly what the circumstances are that have gone on. Hands out, lie down. Over the coming two to three weeks, 14 people were arrested. At the minute, you're under arrest on suspicion of attempted murder. The police used the CCTV as a timeline of events and they also matched this up to their mobile phone devices, including messages that had said that they were meeting up and what was about to happen. During the initial raids, the police also found heroin and cocaine with a street value of £75,000. The gun that was fired during the incident has never been recovered, but they did find some spent casings during a raid of Paul Frayne's farm. The police said in a statement they believe this case is a big example to anybody that thinks that they can terrorise communities and also sell drugs to people that also damage the community. So I really want to hear what people have to say on this story and don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Check out the previous uploads today and follow on social media as well at Scarcity Studios. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace. A 9mm bullet and what we were able to establish through the forensic evidence was that that 9mm bullet had been discharged from the same weapon used in the offence on 5th Street. And we can actually go a step further than that as well. We can see because of the angle of the bullet, which we later recovered from the front of the building in 5th Street, we were able to see that that bullet had travelled from the Mitsubishi Shogun. So we were able to prove that the people within that vehicle definitively discharged a gun and that bullet had travelled from the direction of that vehicle. Did you intend to kill the people who were smashing the shops up. Oh, good. When suspects are arrested, um, they're all interviewed under caution by, by, by police officers. I had no part in this crime. I'm not guilty for it. I've got no acknowledgement of it. That's all I'd like to say. All of the defendants in this case either chose to make no comment to those questions or denied any involvement in, in the offence. That's the butt of your truck. Yeah. That is a bullet. That's a 9mm casing from a bullet. Can you tell me what that's doing in the back of the truck that you move in and out of there? I haven't got a clue. Okay, I haven't got a clue. We've obviously undertaken the, these extensive levels of inquiries from witnesses to CCTV to forensics to searches, arrests, etc. And we, we were able to build a really strong case against these people. In the face of this, what we would say is overwhelming evidence, all the defendants chose to plead guilty. Can I stop this interview and talk, Mr. Lester? Certainly, of course you yeah. can. Ten, ten by you? Yeah, ten by me is 15.45. This really has weeded out an entire organised crime group from our communities. I'm proud of the officers who have worked tirelessly to bring these people to justice. Our partners who have contributed really effectively, our communities who really have stood up and been counted to say that they won't tolerate such behaviour within the community. And I think this acts as a real deterrent for organised criminals who think they can escalate their criminality to such a serious and violent level to say that it just won't be tolerated.